Hey there, David Duford here, and in this video, what I'm going to provide for you guys is a foolproof basic strategy to develop appointments selling either business to business or business to consumer. If you're a salesperson in any industry and you're looking for more appointments set over the phone or even in person, you can take the same strategies I'm about to teach you to do cold canvases as well, then this training is for you. My name is David DeFord. I own DeFord Insurance Group, and what I do is train agents nationally to sell insurance products like final expense, Medicare insurance, or annuities, and I teach them to do this over the phone or face-to-face. -face. So the purpose of this video is really to give a basic yet effective strategy for those of you out there in any industry that are looking to get more appointments booked over the phone or in person. So the way I'm going to organize this conversation today is first tell you about the concept of what I'm about to teach, this appointment setting strategy. I think it's important you understand the why as much as you understand the script. Most people out there will just give you a script and say, read it, and while there is some applicability there and some usefulness, I think it's more important for a lot of people to understand the psychology, the why behind it. So I'm going to explain to you why we do it the way we do. Then I'm going to run through the script of how to implement this. And then I'm going to uh, give you a couple of ways to handle the objections you'll hear, and more specifically, a process of how to handle those objections. Okay, so let's talk about the psychology of, of how we teach appointment setting. So this is an old school strategy that works extremely well in a lot of different industries. I learned this selling uniform services uh, several years ago, which is a heavily intensive outbound appointment setting strategy. And with hundreds of millions of dollars in revenue, they still use this simple type of appointment setting strategy to get in the door. So it's likely it's gonna work for you even if you don't sell uniform services on some level. So the strategy behind what we do uh, in the appointment setting is we sell the appointment, not the product. This is an important concept to understand. What we're looking to accomplish with setting an appointment is to just get in the door. My father used to sell chemicals. He was a chemical manufacturer on a couple of plants. And he would tell me, Dave, if my reps can just get in the door, if they can just set the appointment, half of the battle is already won. Most, if not half the battle is won. So it's important to learn and understand that just getting in the door is, is the most important thing. To sit down with a business owner, an executive, a decision maker, just getting an audience, you're halfway there. And the point of an appointment, if we think about this, is to spend time selling the product, to educate the client on what it is that we have to offer, to qualify the client, to learn more about them, to see if their particular situation is, is a situation we can use our product or service to solve. It's very hard to do the same or have the same level of impact on the phone. Most sales is a relationship game, okay? And so we usually build relationships face-to-face -face first and foremost. So this is how the psychology of the strategy, of appointment setting strategy works. We want to get in the door to then sell the product. Many times you guys out there have advanced, advanced technical products that just are hard to explain in a single phone call, which is why we set an appointment, right? So this strategy is gonna be perfect for you if you understand and embrace this idea that we're selling the appointment and then we're getting the presentation to then sell the product or service that we do. Okay, so how does this, this script actually sound? Let's go through a sample script. And again, some of this is gonna be specific as I go through this to my industry, the insurance sales business, but I'll indicate where you can alter the script a little bit so that you can custom tailor it to whatever product or service that you're selling. So the client picks up the phone and says, hello. I say, hello, is this Mr. Decision Maker? Whoever that is. They say, yes. My response to that is, Hi, my name is David Duford. I'm with XYZ Company, and the reason I'm calling is because I help people solve their problems when it comes to group insurance. I'm calling because it's my job to help small businesses like yours uh, get help with their uh, group benefits, and wondered if I could stop by tomorrow for 10 minutes to show you what we do, and wondered if I could see you at two o'clock 
or would 10 o'clock work better? So let me break the script down a little bit so you can understand the component parts of it and how you can custom tailor it to whatever you're doing. So we open this, the script up, obviously introducing ourselves and the company we work with. It's important to fully introduce yourself and not be hiding who you are or why you're calling. It's very important to name the intent of what it is that you're doing from the forefront. In this case, it's, hi, my name is David Duford from XYZ Company. It couldn't be any more clearer than that. The next step is, why are we calling? We have to identify the purpose of our call so the person on the other end of the line will continue to listen and see if there's interest. You have to make sure that you clearly communicate what it is that you do and the benefit that you provide. So you have to think of a value statement at this point that's relevant for your business. Maybe you sell something like solar panels to business owners and maybe your pitch or your value proposition is, I'm calling because I help business owners reduce their uh, utility expenses with low cost solar panels, something like that. Uh, maybe you're a pest control company and you say, I help business owners uh, reduce their concerns with pests in an affordable way. It, it, it doesn't matter so much what is said here in these examples, but you need to think about what the most valuable thing your business or service offers and condense that into a value statement. So in my example, I said something like, uh, my name is David Duford with XYZ Company. I'm calling because I help small business owners uh, deal with group benefits and maximize their benefits for their employees, something along those lines. The next thing is, is to sell the appointment. So this is the point where we begin to, you know, the client's going to be listening, might be interested, but they're going to have some resistance of, should I sit down with the person? Is this something I'm in the market for? Is this something I'm interested in? <clears throat> so you've got to sell why it's a, not a big deal. There's no obligation. You're just there to set, you're just there to show them information. You're not there to sell anything, okay? Psychologically, delivering information, showing information is easier to absorb and accept than sitting through a meandering, long, droning presentation that they're not necessarily in the market for. So how do we say that? So the reason I'm calling is I, I help business owners with their group benefits and make sure that they're getting every penny's worth of their benefits. I'm going to be in your area tomorrow. It's my job to deliver this information to you. All I need is a 10 quick minutes to show you how this works. And so that's the kind of sell the appointment script, okay? So I'm in your area tomorrow. I need 10 minutes to show you how this works. We do to deliver the information to you, to show you how this program works, whatever the service works, whatever it is that you're selling. I just need 10 minutes. I need 10 minutes. 10 minutes is a short period of time. It's not a fat, long, drawn out conversation. Deliver this information to you always sounds less intrusive than I need to present this to you because then you start getting all weirded out as possibly a prospect does. And then at that point, you just simply close for the appointment. You have to close, just like in your presentations, you have to close over the phone too. So the close is very simple. We do an alternate close where we offer two different times and ask which one works best. We don't ask if they'll meet us. That allows them to say no, right? Can you meet us tomorrow? No, I can't. We don't want that option. We want a yes, yes option, which in this case is, so how would two o'clock or would 10 work better? So that way we get an answer. So again, from the top, the script sounds like this. <clears throat> hey, Mrs. Jones, this is David Duford calling. The reason I'm calling is that I help small groups or small businesses like yourself with their group benefits to make sure every penny is maximized to get the most out of their benefits. And I'm gonna be in your area tomorrow and wondered if I could stop by for 10 minutes to deliver this information at either 10 o'clock or would two work better? <clears throat> that is the script that we use that's very simple to the point and sells the appointment. A couple of notes with the script. As you start to rehearse the script, memorize the script, commit it to memory, you need to understand how we talk on the phone is a little different than face to face. So one of the things you wanna focus on when you say your script is not to allow too long of a pause as you take in your breath. So if you go through a script and it sounds like, 
hey, Mrs. Jones, and there's this awkward pause, they may think they need to answer, or worse, they'll answer and say, uh, you know what, no, I'm not interested. So you cannot let your prospect in the scripting take over where you would naturally pause. So you've got to rehearse the script in a way to where, where there may be a natural end of a sentence in the beginning of the next. You kind of read it and, and with a little pause, but almost as a run-on sentence. And you learn to take breaths at off-place parts of the script in order to keep the process going. Does that make sense? Um, otherwise, you, you lose the opportunity to keep the momentum going. We want them to answer our question at the end, the closing question. We don't want them to insert questions earlier where they try to take control and wrangle away control. Okay, so that's a big thing. And of course, make sure your tonality is up. As in, with any sort of appointment setting strategy or any call strategy, don't drone and monotonously read the script. Make sure you have and be a little excited, be happy. You're gonna make money eventually using these scripts, so get enthused about it. So what happens if they don't agree to the appointment? What kind of objections will you hear? There's all sorts of them. Maybe I'm not interested right now, we're not in the market, we're happy with our current vendor. Again, the strategy and the psychology of this is to capture people who are in market, who are interested in buying what you're selling right now, but also possibly those who aren't interested but if something changes with their vendor, perhaps then they will consider you because you had the boldness to reach out to them despite that and start a relationship with them and know there is a second option, right? So that's what's really good about the script too, is that it captures both immediate opportunities right now as well as those that are completely fine but maybe long-term opportunities. And many of your larger cases, your larger clients, are not going to be in a buying cycle when you call them, but you still need to sit down with them and do a formal introduction, give them some information, stay in touch with them so that they know there's a second option. Again, this script does the job to do that. So what happens if you hear an objection? Uh, I have an acronym uh, that explains how to address any objections that you have, and that is called ASK, A-S-C. Answer the concern or the objection, um, sell the appointment, and then close for the appointment. Again, we're not selling the product here, ladies and gentlemen. We are selling the appointment. And typically, resistance to seeing you is not based off of uh, what they claim it is. It's typically a uh, underlying uh, resistance to a salesperson. So if they say something like, I'm not interested, or they say something like, you know, we're not in the market now, that's not necessarily the case. And it's, it's hard to train yourself to think this way, but you gotta understand that what the prospect says initially may not necessarily be the truth. It might be the truth, but it takes a couple of rebuttals back and forth two or three times to really determine if it is. Many times that first objection we're gonna get sounds legitimate, but it's not. And only if you challenge it and close anyway do you find out if that's true or not? And then some people just break down and say, fine, okay, come on in at this day, okay? And it's true too that for those who object tend to be the best prospects, okay? Think about it. If you've got this great big prospect that you want to do business with one day, the likelihood's pretty high that, that they're going to say, we're happy, we're not in the market right now, we're not really entertaining offers. You don't need to shut the call down at that point. You need to continue to say, hey, that's fine, and then continue with the script we're going to give, okay? So let's talk about that um, acronym script. So answer the objection. Many times the answer to the objection, something as simple as, hey, that's fine. If it's something like, hey, we're not in the market right now, hey, that's fine. Um, a lot of the people we talk to aren't in the market. The reason they meet with us anyway is because they want to know what their other options are. It's always a really good kind of rebuttal, if you will. Okay. Maybe they say something like, mail me some information. Again, the answer to that is, hey, that's fine, um, you know, uh, we don't mail anything out, we just go by and meet people face to face. It can be something as simple as that. Again, the answer to the objection doesn't matter all that much. And again, it's gonna be kind of specific to what it is that you're selling. But keep in mind that the, the, the critical point here I'm saying is not to get into a dissertation or detailed type of rebuttal. Um, keep it simple, a one simple sentence response to that is fine. Even if it's just that it's, hey, that's fine. Sometimes you don't even do anything more than that. Then you sell the appointment. It'll sound very similar to our original script. Hey, that's fine. 
All I need is 10 minutes to show you how this works, Mrs. Jones. What you do with this information is entirely up to you. That is one of the best tactics to sell the appointment. Hey, all I need is 10 minutes uh, to show you how this works. Again, it's a short amount of commitment of a time. Your voice inflection is like it's no big deal. What you do with the information is up to you. Again, that puts it on the lap of the prospect to decide how they want to move forward. Uh, I sometimes I'll throw in there, if you like it, great. If not, you can throw me out. We'll still be friends. Kind of do a little chuckle at the end. Um, but sometimes I don't even add that. But all you need to do is say that. And then you close again. So what do you say? How does 10 or 2 work? And that's it. That's it, really. I mean, that's the entire process that we use. It's very simple. If you think about the objections you hear that are unique to your business, think about in the terms of the acronym ASC, answer the objection, sell the appointment, close for the appointment, how you would rebuttal those objections. You'll find it's not going to be very difficult if you think in that pattern. Um, how many times should you rebuttal objections? Uh, at least three times or until they hang up the phone. Again, you need to be resilient. You need to be diligent in rebuttaling objections. Do not think that they're not interested when they say that. Many times it's a ploy. Many times it's a smoke screen. And the best prospects are those that you have to sometimes fight the hardest to see. Okay. I hope you enjoyed this training and this simple approach to booking more appointments over the phone. I promise you, at least in the insurance business, we teach a very similar strategy. A little bit differences here and there, but mostly the same. And for agents to really employ this and take this last 17 minutes of training and really put it to work, they get incredible results that they otherwise would not get. They see more prospects, they sell more insurance in our cases, and get better results and make more money. So I'm, I, I'm sure that this strategy would work excellent for you and I hope it's something that you'll put into force and at least give yourself 200 calls to see how this will perform for you. Talk to 200 people. And I think what you'll see is a lot more appointments set and a lot more business done. My name is David Duford. If you're interested in selling something like insurance, if you don't know anything about it, that's cool. Uh, we train agents to become top producers, recruit them nationally to sell products like final expense, Medicare, and annuities. Uh, go to my website, davidduford.com. Uh, you can check it out, learn more about insurance. I got a lot of great books that might educate you on how the business works if it's kind of your first uh, foray into it. Uh, go to Amazon.com. There's a good book there. It's called The Official Guide to Selling Insurance for New Agents. Uh, that will give you the inside scoop, the inside baseball to how the business works. And other than that, if you've got any comments, questions about the script, anything you want to add to it, feel free to leave it below. I'll read and reply to your comments. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time. Take care.